What is up guys, AshBFC here, in this video I'm going to quickly talk about some of the games I'm going to be picking up uh, this month. Uh, just in case you realise what month it is. It's August! Uh, well, you know, you'd be surprised, it's the internet, you know, some people's IQs are in the negative, so just drawing that out there. But yeah, um, it's a pretty good month, quite a lot of good games coming out. Uh, going to be pretty expensive for uh, most of us gamers, and quite time consuming, but hey, that's the price you pay for being a gamer. Uh, but yeah, the games I'm going to be getting this month, August. Is. Oh, and just on a side note, uh, Pikmin 3 and uh, Mario and Luigi uh, Dream Team Bros already came out in Europe. Uh, I know they're coming out this month in North America, but otherwise I would have put them on this list, but I already have them. And uh, Pikmin 3 is awesome, by the way. Uh, finally, one of very, very, very few uh, Wii U games worth getting. Uh, so, yeah. But anyway, on with the list. So, first of all, I'm most anticipated of this month. Uh, is Tales of Zillia. Yes, finally this little evasive bastard is uh, coming to Europe and North America. Uh, this game actually came out in Japan um, back in September 2011 and Tales of Zillia 2 came out sometime last year. Uh, we're only just getting the first one now in August 2013. Uh, so I don't know what Namco think they're playing at but uh, it's a bit annoying. Uh, but I should just be grateful getting it full stop because, you know, I mean, especially in Europe because, Christ, we have a long history of getting shafted when it comes to uh, JRPGs. I and mean, we've already missed out on a few Tales of games already. Uh, but yeah, it's finally come in. It looks awesome. going to be great. I love the, the Tales of series. It's a brilliant series. It's always managed to maintain its quality. Uh, I don't think I've played a bad one yet. And I have played almost all of them, I think. Uh, but yeah, it's great, you know, unlike another certain JRPG series, Final Fantasy, that, you know, but uh, it looks awesome, I fear it's not going to disappoint me, and Tales of Zillia 2 has officially been confirmed, that's coming out next year, uh, towards the end of next year. Uh, the only problem is, uh, you know, I'm a huge JRPG fan, but they are very, very time consuming, uh, many of them go beyond like 50, 60, 70, 80 hours, some go up to 100, which is mental. Uh, but in the very time goes to me, need a lot of dedication. I am one of the world's slowest uh, JRPG players, as much as I love them. Uh, I have a bad habit of, I get them, I play the hell of them, I love them, I think I'm going to have a break, play some other stuff and what have you, and then I sometimes find myself not going back to them for ages. Uh, prime example, uh, The Last Remnant, which is a very underrated JRPG. It took me three years, three freaking years to beat that game, and I must have done like 8 to 90 hours on that goddamn thing. It was insanely long, but... I'm very slow. No problem is, I want to try and get Tales of Zillia done uh, relatively quick uh, because uh, GTA 5 is just around the corner for next month, which I will cover in September pickups. But yeah, as soon as GTA 5 hits, why would I want to play anything else? So, yeah, it's going to be hard to. I don't know, I'll figure it out somehow, but yeah. Or well, at least I've got to get it beat before Tales of Zillia 2 comes out next year. I've got about a year to beat it, so hopefully I can do it. But yeah, that's Tales of Zillia. Gonna be awesome. Got my day one edition pre-ordered. Looking forward to it. Next up is actually another Wii U game to buy, besides Pikmin 3. Uh, it's the wonderful 101. It looks awesome, looks like an absolute ton of fun. Uh, and it is gonna be awesome because it's made by Platinum Games, who are like one of the best developers going right now. Uh, they did uh, Mad World, which is amongst the very, very few great Wii games. Uh, they did Vanquish, which was awesome. They did the amazing Bayonetta, and they're doing Bayonetta 2. Uh, they did Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, which was awesome. They're just a hell of a company. And uh, I've got faith that the wonderful 101s will be very, very good. Uh, and finally, another reason to play the Wii U. Because as much as I love Nintendo, I really do. I'll always have a soft spot for them because, you know, I was a Nintendo kid growing up in the 90s. Uh, but, oh, man, they've made a real blunder without Wii U. I mean,. No games for it, no third party support. They obviously thought that everyone from the all those hundred million people that bought a Wii U, all those casual, sorry, a Wii, all those casual gamers want to jump ship to the uh, Wii U. That didn't happen. I didn't ever think it was going to happen, so Nintendo fucked up. But hopefully, you know, the Wii U is starting to pick up a little bit now, might at some point become worth buying, but it currently isn't right now. But yeah, one for 101, looks a ton of fun. And we're actually getting that first in Europe. Uh, before North America, so suck on that, motherfuckers! Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're actually getting quite a few games, Nintendo games, first in Europe. It's weird, it used to be the other way around, but I don't know. Uh, but yeah, wonderful 101, looks a ton of fun, can't wait. Alright, next up is another game I'm still kind of on the fence about because I might actually not end up getting it, I might end up getting something else instead, I'll, I'll come to that later, but uh, it's Lost Planet 3. 
Um, it does actually still come out this month. I mean, these could change. I'm just going off the list I'm seeing on some of the sites and what have you. But uh, Lost Planet 3. Now, uh, I did play Lost Planet 1, the demo, way back when the 360 first came out. And I really liked it. I didn't play the full version. Uh, but uh, it, was, it was a fun game. And then uh, Lost Planet 2 came out and it didn't get very good reviews at all. That I think it was considered a pretty bad game. Uh, but I saw some stuff for 3 and it looks pretty good. It looks fun. Uh, so I, I, I don't know, I'm not entirely sure, um, it could be crap, so I, I don't know, I, I might get Lost Planet 3, I'm not 100% sure yet, it's it, it's a maybe, so maybe it shouldn't be on this list, um, I'll get to what could replace it in a minute, but yeah, Lost Planet 3, possibly. Uh, another one we're going to be getting, but I am slightly sort of sceptical about how it's going to turn out, I'm buying it anyway, but uh, that's Splinter Cell Blacklist, uh, I'm a huge fan of Splinter Cell, uh, especially the old ones, I've been playing it since the beginning. Uh, it's just Splinter Cell is another one of those franchises now that's getting a little bit dumbed down and doing the whole freaking action route to try and get the Call of Duty fans in, which keeps happening, uh, but the stealth is still there, so that's good enough for me, as long as there is still stealth there. When stealth goes from Splinter Cell, it's no longer Splinter Cell and it's dead to me, but it's still there, but it does look to be a bit more like Conviction, faster paced, more uh, with a, an option to run and gun, but... It looks alright. My personal favourite Splinter Cell is Chaos Theory. I think a lot of people would think the same. We've been playing it since the beginning. I mean, I liked Conviction, but like I said, it was just a little bit, you know, action focused. I, I prefer the 100% stealth thing, you know, in the dark, climbing on the pipes, snapping guys' necks from above. Uh, but I, I mean, like I said, Spl uh, Conviction was fun. I think this will be a fun game. I'm looking forward to multiplayer, uh, but yeah, I think it is potential to be a slightly disappointing game. But I'm still buying it, so that's Splinter Cell Blacklist. Uh, next up is uh, Raymond Legends, which I'm really looking forward to, which was also already supposed to be out already, but Ubisoft were being dicks or something like that, and uh, they pushed it back. Uh, but yeah, Raymond Legends, uh, Origins was awesome, I love all the Raymond games, it's uh, some, uh, such an amazing series, uh, and I played the demo for Legends, and it was awesome, so I'm definitely buying this, I'm probably going to get it on the Wii U. Uh, just for, because, just for just a, play, a reason to play the Wii U and get my money's worth, and have it stopped collecting dust, uh, but I think it is coming out on everything, 360, PS3, um, I think maybe the Vita and the 3DS, I'm not entirely sure, but I'll probably get the Wii U version. It's going to be awesome, it's Rayman, Origins was brilliant, it was even half as good as Origins, it's a game worth getting, so yeah, Rayman Legends. The next up is a game I'm really looking forward to as well, despite me not knowing a whole lot about it actually, I've been in the dark a bit about this game, it's kind of a bit of a rule of mine now, is sort of hang back and not know too much. I've covered this in the when I did that video on the things I miss about gaming, where I go about how you know too much, because of all these websites and magazines and videos on YouTube and uh, all these previews like IGN doing like one hour gameplay footage and stuff. You know too much, so I'm kind of staying in the dark, but uh, it's Killer is Dead uh, by Grasshopper Manufacture, and this is such an awesome company, very underrated. They do very sort of adult themed games, a lot of sexual content and innuendo and stuff, and they're also, I mean, they did the, the incredibly underrated um, uh, Shadows of the Damned. If you haven't played that, you really should. It's so underrated. It's a brilliant game. And Lollipop Chainsaw as well. There's some more recent titles. I know it didn't get great scores, but I really liked that game. It was just wacky over the top. Didn't take itself serious. It was a ton of fun. And they also did a, a Killer 7, which I believe, I could be wrong, but I do think that uh, Killer is Dead is some sort of spiritual successor to Killer 7. I might be completely wrong on that, but... I think I read that somewhere, but it's going to come out and it's going to be great. Can't wait for it. So yeah, that's Killer is Dead. Uh, now as for the ones I've skipped, um, Saints Row 4 is one I'm skipping. Uh, because, well, I love the first Saints Row game. I thought it was brilliant. I really enjoyed Saints Row 2. Saints Row 3 just didn't do it for me. They went a bit too wacky and they just, they're trying too hard to separate themselves from Grand Theft Auto now. And, they're just going for all out wacky and bizarre, and it's a bit too far for me. And I, I, I just didn't really like Saints Row 3 that much. And 4, they've just gone mental. It's about an alien invasion. And I mean, it looks like it could be so fun, but it's still running on the same engine. It does look a bit dated now. So I thought, nah. I know there's not a lot. Of, I know there's a, fan, a lot of fans who aren't happy about it, and some are thinking, oh, this is awesome. But I don't look that impressed with it, to be honest. And with GTA 5 as well. I just can't see myself really playing it if I do buy it, you know, at this point. Plus, I'm already pissed off with uh, Deep Silver, the publishers, for the DLC bullshit they're pulling on it. They're already one of those companies that are announcing, oh, day one DLC! They're announcing DLC before the game's even come out. They're basically uh, 
here you go gamers, have this, this is what we're not putting in your game, you want this, you'll pay extra on top of what you're already paying to begin with. And it really annoys me, in fact, they cut out something that was supposed to be DLC for Saints Row 3, and instead of including it in Saints Row 4, which would be the sort of, you know, the obvious thing to do, no, we'll keep it DLC and make it DLC for Saints Row 4 and make some more money because we're money grubbing bastards. So that kind of sealed it for me, I'm not buying Central 4, I'll just wait for a second hand copy or something. And like I said, GTA 5 as well, so, you know, that's why I'm not getting Central. Uh, but uh, there is also XCOM, uh, the Bureau, which, that's why I'm kind of on the fence about whether I'm going to get that instead of Lost Planet 3. Because that game does look a ton of fun, so I'm not sure, I'm not decided yet, is it going to be Lost Planet 3 or is it going to be XCOM, uh, the Bureau? I haven't decided, so I'll make up my mind sometime about those two games. But yeah, overall, there you go, that's, that's uh, seven games to pick up this month, so no chance I'm going to be able to play all those, and no way in hell I'm going to beat all those in a month, but I'm buying them anyway, so something will go on the shelf to be played for a, a later day. I don't know why I do it, I just I just do that. You know, it might make sense just to wait and buy those games later on, but that's the sort of nerd I am. I've got to have things there and then. I can't wait, I'm impatient. But there you go, that's the second... Uh, so that's the second. That's the seven games I'm going to be picking up this uh, August. So, yeah, thanks for watching. You know, maybe tell me what you guys are picking up uh, this month. So, yeah, see you later.